The snapping turtle is the biggest turtle species in Canada and is easily identified by its extremely large total body size and its bulky head with a short, pointed snout and hooked beak. As one might assume, the word serpentina in the scientific name refers to the long, snake-like neck that allows the turtle to extend its head far from its body. While especially evident in younger turtles, even older adults have prominent ridges on the top of their shell, called the carapace, which can either be completely smooth in appearance or covered in algae. The bottom part of the shell, or plastron, is greatly reduced in this species. Furthering this turtle's dinosaur-like appearance is a long, scaly tail and heavy, curved claws. For the most part, baby and juvenile snapping turtles resemble adults, with the ridged carapace, reduced plastron, large head and long tail being the most obvious characteristics. The snapping turtle is not easily confused with other turtles. However, another Ontario species, the stink pot or common musk turtle, also has a reduced plastron and sometimes feisty attitude when defending itself, which can cause it to be confused with a young snapping turtle. Nevertheless, the stink pot's small adult size, short tail, and highly domed shell distinguish it from the snapping turtle. This species has a rather large range and can be found throughout southwest, central, and eastern Ontario, and also extending slightly into northern and northwestern Ontario. The life history of all turtle species is similar, and the snapping turtle is no exception. This species takes a very long time to reach maturity, taking 17 to 20 years in the northern part of the range. Adult survival is very high from one year to the next, and they are extremely long-lived with estimates exceeding 50 years and theoretical limits of 100 years or more. After maturity, snapping turtles lay a lot of eggs throughout their lifetime, with an average of 30 eggs or more per nest at least once every year until death. Of the thousands of eggs laid throughout the turtle's life, only one or two survive to become reproductive adults. It is for this reason that adult turtles are so important to the population, and why turtles are some of the most endangered animals on the planet. Snapping turtles are omnivorous, consuming both plant and animal matter. Juvenile turtles consume more animal matter to aid in growth. They are important scavengers and do a great service to the ecosystem by consuming dead animals. Adults especially consume much vegetation, including algae, as seen here. Snapping turtles live in a wide variety of habitats. Essentially any permanent body of water, big or small, could be home to this turtle. They seem to favor quiet ponds, lakes, and slow-moving streams with muddy bottoms and abundant vegetation. This turtle is designated as a species at risk in Ontario and Canada. It is a species of special concern under the Species at Risk in Ontario list, as well as the Federal Species at Risk Act. The main threat to the snapping turtle is habitat destruction and alteration, especially where there are roads. As wetlands are continually filled in to build housing communities and golf courses, these turtles are either outright killed in the process, or displaced to less suitable habitats where the population slowly disappears. Shoreline development restricts the turtle's ability to climb out onto land to lay its eggs. Non-stop recreation on the water is not only stressful for the turtles that make this their home, but thousands of boats zipping around needlessly cause the deaths of many snapping turtles floating near the surface due to propeller injuries as seen here. Similarly, the ever-growing network of roads crisscrossing through snapping turtle habitat have taken a huge toll as adult females tend to cross these roads or attempt to lay their eggs on the sandy shoulders. An adult female is immeasurably valuable to the population and they are frequently killed on these roads, both accidentally and intentionally. Illegal poaching is a significant concern because, given their life history, killing even a small number of adults for food is completely unsustainable. Poachers frequently leave baited hooks, called set lines, in the water to catch these turtles. The turtles are often left for days with a hook in its throat or stomach until the poacher comes to check the lines. Sometimes, by accident, fishermen catch a snapping turtle, and these hooks can and do sometimes cause death. While predators are a natural part of the ecosystem, Due to increased human settlement, certain predators such as raccoons, skunks, and foxes, for example, are at unnaturally high levels. We call these subsidized predators as they occur at high levels due to the garbage, food crops, etc. provided by people. In areas where subsidized predators occur, nearly 100% of turtle nests are destroyed every single year, as is seen in these night vision recordings. Snapping turtles are in trouble, but there are ways you can help. Watch for turtle crossing signs and always pay attention to what's on the road, especially during the nesting season in late spring and early summer. If you see a turtle on the road, and if it is safe to do so, pull over and help it across, always in the direction it was facing. Snapping turtles don't know you are trying to help and may try to defend itself, so avoid the head and be aware of its long reach. You can approach the turtle from behind, 
gently grab the turtle under the back of the shell and usher it across. Or you can use an object to gently persuade the turtle. Take the opportunity to educate others about snapping turtles. A lot of myths around this species. Much research has been done, and these turtles do not deplete fish stocks or waterfowl populations, so there is no need to persecute them for this reason. They do not attack people and are extremely gentle in the water. However, they may defend themselves on land because this is where their predators are, and the reduced plastron offers little protection. Get involved wherever and whenever you can. There are organizations that work to save these animals, so check to see if you can volunteer in your area. We only get one chance to save these turtles before it is too late.